So this is a quick demo of how to invoke web service data control, pass parameter between pages, pass parameter to the web service, and other aspects. So the key thing to understand are the things that we're going to use here. We have one method in our web service called get my departments, which returns a collection of departments. We have another method called merge department changes, which accepts a department object and then just prints out I'm updating and the name of the department. So those two things are in a web service that we exposed uh, as a web service. It's running right now. And we also created a data control for it in this project. So if we actually look into this project, there's a data control in here um, with those methods in there. OK, so we got the get my department and also the merge department. And what we're going to do now is build a, a lookup page. So that would be the first page in our application. And for the lookup page, all we're going to do is display the list of departments. So we're basically going to invoke the web service called get my departments, which returns an object of type department that we can just drag and drop into the page and drop, for example, as a read-only table and enable various behaviors. All right, so now we have a table. And what we want to also do is take this ID here, ID field, and we want to enable people to click on it and select a specific department. So I'm going to copy the value from here. Okay. And you'll see why in a second, because now I'm going to convert this text item into a link like that. Okay. And then I'm losing my value, but I'm going to just paste it back. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to write select and then the value so that would be the new value of um, this field and then there's an action that i want to perform there and that's the navigation to the next page so this is the navigation called go that is defined here All right back here one thing you might have noticed is that there was a little arrow uh, indicating that this is an invalid entry for a command so i'm going to remove it like that okay so we have this page almost done. The one thing we need to do next is actually pass the specific row that we selected to the next page. And to do that, we're going to use an operation component called set property listener, which I'm dropping on the link. Uh, where do we get the value from? If we go into the expression builder, we have this uh, item that is basically the return from the web service. Okay? And under it, there's the uh, current row and the data provider. That's what we're getting, and that's basically the object that represents the department. Okay, and where do we put it into? We're going to put it into a page flow scope. Okay, variable. Let's call this variable depth. And again, here you can basically specify any name you want. Okay. So this would be an object containing our department, which will get the value. All right. This is a page flow um, object, so it will be available for us in the next page as well. Right. So now let's go back here and let's create the second page. All right. On the second page, what we actually need to do is we want to merge the changes. So this would be a page where we can edit the department and then merge the changes back. And to do that, we're going to use the merge department change operation, right? Uh, which has a parameter and uh, returns a value, actually a Boolean value. So we're going to drag this method over here and drop it as a button, for example. Okay. And this method accepts uh, an object of type department, and we're just going to pass it the department object that we have in the page flow, like that. Nice. Now we need um, actual fields that will allow us to change values for departments. So we can um, basically do it this way. We're going to take a couple of input text items. When? And we're going to associate them with some values. So the values are actually coming from the same object. And for example, there's the property called name. OK, let me make this a little bigger. And for the second field, we can have property called uh, ID, for example. OK. And we can, of course, give it labels like that. And basically what we have here are two text fields 
that are associated with this object in the memory. So when we modify those text fields, this object is being modified, and then pressing the button actually um, submits this to the next web service. Right? So what would be interesting to see here is that in the binding we have the method invocation, the method invocation has a parameter, the parameter is the page flow object that we're changing. Alright, and um, that's basically it. One thing we can also do is we can actually take this button and also tell it to navigate back to the first page. Alright, let's run the flow. So here's our first page. Okay, and you can see the various department with the select operation for each one of them. I'm going to do one little change in JDevelop. I'm going to clear the log here so we can see any messages that come up clearly. Okay. So we're going to select a department. Let's select department 20, which is the JDeveloper department. Right, so we click on it. And in the next page, we get this department because we basically set it into an object. The object shows up here. We can update the department. So let's call it, let's say, JDeveloper4 and click the button that would actually invoke the web service method to update this department. Okay, you can see the change here as well. And the more interesting part is to see the change here. So this little message is actually coming from the web service where it accepted the merge changes, get, got the parameter for department with a new value and set it up. So this is what we saw here in the log window. And that's basically it.